so this is number 1537. So they'll all be in our uh, equilibrium expression. You only include those of the same phase when you're doing the equilibrium expression? Uh, you will only get those of the same phase. So okay. they'll all be gases or they'll all be aqueous. Okay. And then yeah. they're solids or we ignore them? Or solids or liquids. Solids or liquids. Okay. Yeah. This once is the total pressure at equilibrium. Oh, and it gives you a little more information. So it gives you some of the initial yeah. zero point one eight six moles. It also gives you the volume. In this case, you won't have to change it to molarity, but I usually do. And that's about all the information. It wants to know the total pressure. Uh, since it wants to know the total pressure, if I get the total concentration at the end, I'll just convert the pressure using the ideal gas law. Okay. Is essentially what? I'm going to do because these are gases, so I can use the ideal gas law. Okay, so let's try. Move. So, really, that's my initial line here. Mm -hmm. Usually, certain things aren't going to be given, so I'll just put them as zeros. So, you just assume it's zero? Yes. Oh. If it's not given, you're assuming it's zero. Okay. okay. That's very standard. Almost always you're going to be doing that, unless they give you a number for each. Okay, so let's just show you that. Yeah. So just get used to that part. Okay, here's the change thing. Uh, so, really for change, if you want to be mathematical about it, you're taking Q, which in this case, it looks just like K, but it's got these initial factors on it. Oh, by the way, let's see if this is balanced. Looks balanced. So we're going to take these initials. Okay? Everything's to the first power because all the coefficients are 1. And then when you plug in for this, you're going to get 0 times 0 over whatever this number is 0 0.186 divided by. It's kind of irrelevant what that number is because it's going to turn out to be zero anyways. So we take those, we're just using our initial values? Yes. So Q is always from the I-line. Okay. So to calculate Q, you use the I-line. The result of your calculation from Q is in the C-line. So really, Q is involved in both of these. Your values come from the I-line, and then your answer goes into the C-line. Okay, so you get zero. So it's meaningless what k is. Q has to be smaller than it. Because k is not going to be 0. So, or it's not going to be negative either. k won't be 0. And it won't be infinity. It will be anything in between there. Not a negative number. So it's smaller than k. This means there's not enough products. This value is too small. Because it wants to be k. Because this value is too small, it's going to shift to make more of these. So that this overall value here for Q will equal K. That's the idea. Q always wants to be K. It has to shift to the right towards the, towards the products to do that. Can you say it one more time? Sure. Uh, because Q is smaller than K, mm -hmm. this numerator mathematically is too small. It has okay. to be a bigger number. In fact, it has to be big enough so that this ends up being 4. Okay. So, because it's just too tiny, it has to be a lot bigger than zeros. So, we need more products. 
in order to do that. Gotcha. So it has to shift to the right to make more of these. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. All right. And the opposite would be true if Q was greater than K, not case in this, not the true in this case for this problem, but it was greater than K, it would have too many products. So then it's got to shift back to the left to get rid of products and make more reactants. Okay. So this would be like that. Gotcha. Uh, a really easy way to do this, whenever you have a zero, that is the one that has to have the plus. You just cannot function with zeros in your equilibrium. So the side, even if it only had one zero, that's the side that has to have the plus. Is there ever going to be a situation where we would not have a zero? Yeah, yeah, you've already seen some. Uh, in your homework there should be some. And then I think there was at least one in class where everything had a value. Perhaps. Uh, chapter 15. When we do chapter 16 and 17, it's going to be much more rare to have a non-zero somewhere. So 16 and 17, this is going to be extremely normal. Now almost all shift to the right. Okay. So what would we do if we did have a situation in which we would have no zeros? Then you'd have to calculate Q just like I did it, mm -hmm. if there were no zeros, and see if Q or K is bigger. Mm -hmm. And then just determine which way shifting based on that. Yeah. Okay. Do that. Or if you found mathematically, like if Q was 2, it'd be here. It still have to shift to the right. But if Q is 6, which is going to be uh, greater than K, then I have to shift back towards the reactants. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. So you don't need to do have zeros, it just makes the problem way easier. Alrighty. Uh, you had a question? Well, so for every value that's not given, and this is just for gases, right? So for every gas value that's not given, it's a zero we're going to assume? In any problem. Okay. And it doesn't matter if it's gases or aqueous or whatever. Okay. Uh, if it's not given, we're assuming it's zero. Okay. And basically, in this problem, it says you just you start with this. When it's saying you start with something, it means you don't have an end product yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's that part. Two ways. If there's zero, it's super easy. You put the plus x's there. That's essentially saying, oh, q is zero, so that must shift to the right. Or if q is infinity, meaning there's a zero here and numerical values on the right hand side, then it's got to shift towards this zero, so plus x over here. Uh, and if q is infinity, it's too big, you got to shift to the left to make more reactants. Okay. Because an infinite q means it's all products. And q will be infinity at zero on that If side. this is zero, yeah. Okay. I mean, your math instructor would say limit of q as it approaches infinity. Okay. Just it's easier for us, it's infinity. <laughs> yeah. Okay? All right, so next line, E line. So you just add these two up. So whatever that value is, 0 0.186 over 2.16 minus x, x, and x. You're adding i and c. So remember, this is the sum of i plus c equals the E line. Uh, so uh, it's going to be k. Uh, and this is of uh, Kc, which is NH3 times CO over HCO and H2, which is x squared over whatever this value is, 0 0.186 over 2.16 minus x. That's uh, 0 0.0861. Thank you.